Hi friends, once in my garage, which was converted into a warehouse, I walked next to the rack, where I have all sorts of different soldering irons lying around, and I got the idea to make a video review about soldering irons. Today we will consider almost all types of soldering irons, their advantages and disadvantages. We will study both classic soldering irons and exotic ones. I'm sure many of you didn't even know about their existence. As we know, the most popular way to connect electrical components is soldering. A soldering iron is a device that heats solder to the melting point. The device is universal. It is used for both mounting and dismounting of components. The first soldering irons were a handle with a copper bar at the end. The bar was heated over an open fire and, due to its high heat capacity, kept the temperature for a long time. Such simple soldering irons were autonomous, but inconvenient due to the massive tip. If you decrease its size, then the heat will quickly be transferred to the environment and the soldering time will also be reduced for one heating cycle. When electricity came to all industries, soldering irons became electric. Although such primitive soldering irons are still sometimes useful, if nothing else is available. I will start the story, perhaps with classical soldering irons, with those that stick into the mains and heat up. As a rule, such soldering irons don't contain any electronics and have a simple design. They consist of nichrome nichrome heater wound on a sleeve, and a tip that enters the same sleeve and, as a result, heats up. The tip is usually copper or iron. A copper tip has a higher thermal conductivity and, naturally, it is better than an iron tip, but alas, copper wears out quickly. Such soldering irons can be both mains and low voltage, as a rule 12, 24, 36 or 40 volts. They can be powered by either AC or DC. The power varies from several to hundreds of watts. There are different form factors, for example a dual mode soldering iron gun. There is nothing special about it, except for the form factor and dual mode. If the soldering iron is plugged in and the button isn't pressed, the power is less because the voltage to the heater is supplied through the diode. When the button is pressed, the full mains voltage is supplied to the heater by passing the diode. This is the so-called hatchet, a powerful soldering iron, which has a handle, a massive copper bar and a nichrome heater. Such soldering irons are used for soldering massive parts, for example, for radiator soldering. In the amateur radio business, they are rarely used. Due to the massive tip with a huge heat capacity, such soldering irons hold heat for a very long time and they can work for a long time after disconnecting from the mains. And this is its modern brother. Only the form factor is slightly different and the tip is smaller. These soldering irons can be rated at 150 to 500 watts. A short commercial break. Tired of homemade PCB technology or your PCBs aren't as pretty as you'd like? GLC will manufacture boards of any complexity and size for you. The complexity isn't important. The minimum cost for a batch of 10 to 10 cm boards starting from $2. Join Easy EDA and GLC PCB Electronics Group to get more benefits. This group is founded for all Easy EDA and GLC PCB users who like to discuss technical questions, share PCB and EDA idea and get bonus sometimes. All the links will be in the description below the video. USB soldering irons. It works on the same principle. A nichrome heater and a working tip. Such soldering irons often have a power of 4.2 to 12 watts and are powered from a 5 volt source or from a conventional USB. The tip is usually non-separable. Together with a heating element, it is a single unit. Because the soldering iron has a low power and the tiny tip doesn't have a high heat capacity, such devices can only be used for some small works. Often a timer with touch activation is set into such soldering irons. You take the device in your hands and it starts. After a certain time it turns off if you don't touch the sensor. There are of course more complex electronic USB soldering irons with electronic control, display and so on. 
The tip of conventional soldering irons isn't very durable, but more expensive samples may have a tip with a non-combustible coating and even a thermal stabilization system to maintain a stable temperature at the end of the tip. Cordless soldering irons. They often are no different from classical soldering irons, except that they are powered by conventional batteries or a rechargeable battery. These soldering irons belong to the class of stand-alone devices because not tied to mains. Cheap rechargeable soldering irons like this are powered by three 1.5 volt AA batteries, but they can also work from 1.2 volt nickel batteries. They have the same tip as ordinary USB soldering irons, accordingly, the power also doesn't differ much. More expensive models run on lithium batteries and have a built-in battery charging and protection system. They can have a power of 30 or even 50 watts and are equipped with a tip with a non-combustible coating. The disadvantage of powerful cordless soldering irons is a short battery life. But in return, you get a rather serious and powerful soldering iron that will cope with most radio technical tasks. Like USB soldering irons, these can also have some electronics inside, which are responsible for the timer, heating control, battery charging, and protection. Instant soldering irons are so called moment soldering irons. As a rule, they are made in the form of a soldering iron gun. Their heating principle is radically different from the classical one. If in the first case the nichrome heater heats the tip, then in this case we find a transformer inside. It has two windings, primary mains and secondary power. The secondary winding is designed for low voltage and very high current, more than 100 amps. This winding is closed by the tip and in fact we get a short circuit, which leads to the heating of the tip. The winding itself also heats up, but this is mostly the heat transmitted from the tip. Such a soldering iron tends to heat up to operating temperature in a few seconds. The tip can be made of either copper or steel. The disadvantage of such a soldering iron is its heavy weight due to the presence of a heavy iron transformer. But nothing prevents you from replacing it with a compact and lightweight switching power supply. The power of such soldering iron ranges from 60 to 150 watts. They are inconvenient for everyday tasks, it is difficult to solder small components, and also the hand gets tired. Gas-fired soldering irons also belong to the class of standalone soldering irons. In fact, it is an ordinary lighter with a tank filled with regular butane via filling valve and a burner, on which you can put on a special nozzle for soldering. This nozzle contains the secret of such soldering irons. Inside them there is a grid of catalyst, which is first heated by the flame of the burner, and then as soon as it has heated up, the flame can be extinguished. The gas stream will still be directed to the grid and it will be in a red-hot state, but there will be no flame. The principle is called catalytic or flameless combustion. This principle is used in travel heaters, some camping burners and so on. The temperature of the tip heating is regulated by the gas flow regulator. Such soldering irons can be with or without piezo ignition and have all kinds of nozzles for soldering, cutting plastic and so on. To be honest, I didn't like gas soldering irons for several reasons. Cheap options don't shine with durability. They always have leakage of gas somewhere and get clogged quite often. It would seem that they are good as a standalone soldering iron and the gas supply will last for a long time, but this isn't so. A reservoir of 10 mm is enough for 15 to 20 minutes of continuous operation, and from an economic point of view, it is expensive if you are actively soldering with such a soldering iron. There are also gas fired soldering irons with a large reservoir, but they are bulky. Another drawback is an open hot catalyst. It is extremely dangerous to work with such a soldering iron in places where it can be flammable vapors or substances. Soldering iron with desoldering pump.
The soldering pump is a suitable thing which helps out when dismantling multi-pin components by sucking in the solder at the soldering point. To use a desoldering pump, the solder must be melted with the soldering iron. This isn't always convenient because both hands are occupied. And someone once decided to cross these two tools and as a result we got soldering iron with this soldering pump. This is an ordinary soldering iron with a classic design except that there is a through hole in the center of the tip which is connected to the pump. In this way you can quickly melt and remove the solder if necessary. To be honest, the device doesn't shine with a super convenience. It is mechanical and each time this mechanism needs to set up, as in the case of a common desoldering pump. But there are also dismantling vacuum guns, which include a vacuum pump. You press the button and the suction of the solder begins. In my opinion, it's very convenient. Such guns can be either a separate device powered from the mains or as part of professional stations. Soldering stations are the most popular among radio amateurs, engineers, and in general, they are irreplaceable where there is a need for soldering. The word soldering station often means a soldering complex consisting of at least a fan and a soldering iron, but here we will just consider a soldering iron. Again, this is a classic soldering iron. The heating principle is the same as that of a common soldering iron, only at the stations, as a rule, the tip itself is put on the heater, but it's not always the case. Moreover, the heater can be either nichrome or ceramic. The station provides the ability to adjust the temperature of the tip and something more, namely thermal stabilization and advanced control. That is, you're soldering, for example, something massive, and the tip quickly loses temperature and the solder begins to cool down. Such soldering irons have a thermal sensor that understands that the temperature has dropped. The electronic filling of the station monitors the data from the thermocouple and increases the heater power automatically so that you can continue comfortable soldering. On average, the power of soldering irons from classic station ranges from 35 to 120 watts and more precisely from 40 to 65. More complicated stations have microprocessor control and much extended menu, which makes it possible to set the time the soldering iron enters slip mode, the temperature of the tip heating immediately after switching on, the temperature adjustment step and much more. Stations can have an informative display that shows the main parameters in real time. It should be noted that in soldering irons, a lot depends on the type of tip. Yes, I mean ultra-popular HECO T12 tips, its clones and modifications. Such a tip is monolithic. Inside is a heater and a thermocouple. It has a non-combustible coating that doesn't wear out for years, even with active soldering. The thermocouple at such tips is located at a very close distance from the end, due to which the station reacts to the slightest temperature changes with lightning speed. Thanks to this, these tips are universal and cope with the soldering of very massive polygons with a nominal power of 60 to 65 watts. They can compete with 100 to 120 watt soldering irons. In addition, T12 tips heat up to operating temperature in 5 seconds. And yes, I know that you upgraded your soldering iron and it heats up at increased voltage in 3 seconds and the power is 90 to 100 watts. But the stations take up a certain place on the desktop and also people like me are too lazy to reach for the temperature control knob every time. Clever Chinese know their business and therefore soldering stations in the handle of a compact soldering iron were invented. Yes, this is a full-fledged soldering station only without a large control unit. Here all the electronics are hidden in the handle. A display, a couple of control buttons, an accelerometer and almost all the settings that are in any station. The same tip T12 is used only in a different form factor. In a word, you apply 24 volts to the soldering iron, and that's all. Convenient control right under the thumb. Put down a soldering iron, and after a while it drops the temperature. Picked it up, it automatically increases. If you don't work with it for a long time, it will go into sleep mode. You got fast thermal stabilization, durable non-combustible tip, warming up to 300 degrees in just 5 to 6 seconds. 
What else is needed for complete happiness? And for complete happiness, you need a smart induction soldering station, or at least an ordinary one. By the principle of heating, they are radically different from classic soldering irons and stations. They don't have a heating element, they have an inductor and a tip. An alternating magnetic field of high frequency is formed in the inductor and four cold induction or eddy currents are induced, which hits the ferromagnetic tip road or it has a ferromagnetic coating. As a rule, the working part itself or the tip is made of copper for the best heat transfer and has a known combustible coating. In such soldering irons, the temperature of the tip is controlled in several ways. The main one is the heating of a ferromagnetic material to the Curie temperature, after which the material loses its magnetic properties and heating stops, and when it cools below the Curie point, heating resumes. Such soldering irons have long life, a lightning fast reaction to temperature changes at the end of the tip, and they can have high power with the relatively small size of the inductor. The biggest plus is that unlike common soldering irons in which the heat from the heater is transferred to the tip, in induction units the tip is heated directly without additional losses. And of course the efficiency and warm-up time of good induction stations are at a very high level. The disadvantage is probably the price. Induction stations from leading manufacturers can cost up to $1,000. The next type of soldering iron is probably one of a kind and hasn't found widespread use due to the delusional principle of operation. This is a soldering iron widely advertised in telemarkets, which solders but doesn't heat up. If something is soldered, then you can immediately touch the tip without getting burned. How is this possible? It's very simple. As a rule, it's tip powered from four finger batteries of one and a half volts. Tip consists of two non closed graphite beveled half sleeves. At working, the solder gets caught between these hoof like things, heats up and melting because all the current from the batteries is applied here. Disadvantages. First, for this soldering to be possible, the batteries must supply very high currents. This thing doesn't work at all from ordinary batteries. It doesn't work normally even from good alkaline ones. I managed to get it to work only from 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride batteries. They can supply high current, but in this case, the wiring of the soldering iron itself and the batteries are also heat up. Secondly, on these graphite pieces we have the full voltage from the battery and if we touch the wrong component during installation or dismantling, then it is quite possible to short something and burn it. In general, it is nonsense invented by marketers. Well, so the stylish design and autonomy, but the idea is unsuccessful. The idea is cold soldering, but the disadvantages cover up this single plus. Soldering tweezers convenient for mounting and dismounting, particularly SMD components, but we can't say that they are in demand because almost everything that can be done with them can be done with fan and even faster. This is an ordinary classic soldering iron. There are just two heaters and two tips. The design allows you to use the device like a regular tweezers, but nothing unusual. It seems to have missed nothing. Of course, there are all sorts of hybrid soldering irons created for marketing purposes, and in fact, they don't make our job easier. In this video, I haven't considered hot air and infrared soldering stations because the goal was to show the varieties of soldering irons and not methods of heating solder. If you're interested in the video on the stations, write a comment about this. And that's all for today. Please don't forget to share this video if you liked it. And subscribe to my Instagram where I upload photos of new projects and interesting things. Now I say goodbye. Until we meet again. With you was Kaysian TV.